Good morning, guys. Oops, didn't mean to blow the horn. Oh, this is me to say. Oh, the ice just fell out the hood of my truck. I look like if they had hit me, they would have knocked me out. Just want to say, guys, do not be a stupid trucker. Trying to be a super trucker. <laughs> if the conditions are too bad to drive, pull over. Your life, the life of the people around you, is worth more than a load. Because the loads, those are material things, and they're going to get there. And you want to get there too. So, but thank goodness I was able to get my load out. Um, this is why I need tools in my truck. Somebody want to donate me a toolbox. <laughs> Uh, let me see what I got. I need something to break this ice. I need to go home and prepare my toolbox for this. Hey, that works. Use whatever works, you know? I got... A few tools from the dollar store. But I got I need to bring my hammer and a bunch of other stuff. But I just didn't have food was more important at the time. So I bought food. When you walk away from the door, always secure your door. And keep an extra key with you at all times. When you get out, make sure you check your truck. Make sure everything's still hooked up right. You know. Check your tires. Oh, look at that. Make sure y'all still hooked up nicely. And everything. Check your tires. Just do a whole pre-trip before you take off. Even though you had to shut down for the night, you know, you still have to do your pre-trip before you take off again. So, make sure you get that done. Oh. Back to that. Then make sure you got it started on your ELD or driver tech or Believe it or not, people can actually, you know, be vindictive. They can actually mess with your stuff at night. If you're sleeping hard, you're like, well, somebody do something like that. Or it could just come loose, you know. The weather, anything could happen. So, just be careful. Make sure you do everything that you're supposed to do. Cause there's no will I there's none of that you either do it or don't try to do your 15 minutes you find yourself did five minutes you still have to wait the other 10 minutes Oh, but never do a five-minute pre-trip. Don't do that. Try to check as much as you can. Well, I know I'm not getting any oil out here, but my oil was okay the other day. So when I get back to D.C. before I leave out again, I will check it again to see if I need any. You always don't depend on the lights indicators on your truck when it comes to oil and stuff like that. Just check it anyway. And make sure you check both sides of your truck. I don't know. Was I supposed to put this on an empty truck? I don't know. I will. If I can get it in here. Oh. 
It's my first day by myself yesterday. Then I made it. Did what I was supposed to do, I hope. No, I'll find out when I get back. If I did something I wasn't supposed to. But hopefully I did. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good morning. Checking the other side. Check everything. Checking it once, checking it twice. You don't want nothing between your tires. Make sure there's no nails, if you can see them. I know underneath the tire, you can't see if there's any nails in there. But you, that's when you do your, um, you check your brakes. You pull up a little bit, and then you can see the other part of your tire. Jump out, check it. If you're worried about nails. Things looking pretty good here. So I'm getting ready to take off and go back to base. This is about two hours from here. I'm glad they didn't kick me out. Because there's no trucks. This is not a truck parking lot. But it was really bad last night. And it's safer to find someplace safe and out of the way. I made sure that there was room for other vehicles to drive. Don't be a jerk. And, and, and because things are, you know, really bad, park somewhere where other people can't get to the businesses. You know, because I can't move my truck because I ain't got no time. You know, personal conveyance, if you're unloading and you're leaving a, a facility, be courteous. Be nice to other people that aren't truck drivers. Even though they're not always nice to us. <laughs> but two wrongs don't make a right. So be nice. Be courteous. Remember that you're pretty big. Pretty tall, pretty big. Although we're sitting in these seats, we don't seem like we're that big. But we are. And people have gotten to the point where they're not even intimidated by big trucks. They don't respect the truck. <laughs> you got to respect the truck. You got to do a video on, on respecting the truck. Which I've always respected the truck. Always. Make sure you got three points of contact when you get in your truck. I have this little bar here. Make sure I got at least two feet touching the truck at all times. I'm gonna put down this, I'm gonna put down this camera on this seat. And I'm gonna get in. Three points is all, it's very important. this morning that's my word for the day and doing a, a pre-trip and I think that you know do a pre-trip on your life you know do yes now the word for the day I mean the mantra for the day is do a pre-trip on your life yes do it just like I have to do a pre-trip on this truck you know and check everything out. Look under the hood. I didn't show you that part because I had to put my camera down. Um, in my pocket. So, uh, yeah, do a pre-trip. When you do a pre-trip on your truck, you check out everything to make sure everything's functional before you get on the highway, get on the road. So you can drive safe. So you can save lives. So you can save your own life. You have to do all that when you get in your truck. Now I'm going to say, do a pre-trip on your life. You know? You know, we do a pre-trip before we leave the house so nobody will laugh us at, at us because we have on the wrong shoes. That's a pre-trip. To make sure you have on the right clothes and that you put on a new a coat so if it's cold outside, that's your pre-trip. But you need to do a pre-trip on your life, okay? When you do a pre-trip on your life, you're going to sit there and look at all the things in your life that, that can be repaired. Things that can be repaired, like a bad relationship. You know, if it's something that you want and you want to continue driving in that relationship and being in that relationship, get some help. Get it repaired. That's why they make mechanics to repair this. They make uh, 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 social, they make, uh, what do you call it, psychologists. They make uh, wife counselors. They make priests. They make pastors. They make mama, you know, 
grandma, auntie, they make other people around you to help you and give you advice. That is a pre-trip. That is the maintenance after the pre-trip. You do the pre-trip to see if there's something wrong. Like I said, if it's something wrong with um, your job and you're so miserable at your job that you hate going there, that you get sick even just going to the door, you need to do a pre-trip to find out why you're getting sick so that thing can get fixed. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe you need to take some extra training. You know, that training would be the maintenance you need to move on, you know, because some pre-trips, some things just can't be fixed, okay? Like my inverter right now is out. I'm, I'm Yes, I'm using our lives and my truck together. <laughs> my inverter and my truck blew out. There's no fixing it. The fuse isn't blown. It's just the whole thing is just no good. So there's no way to fix it. So it has to come all the way out and put a new inverter in my truck. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes in life, if that job has made you sick, miserable, unhappy, you got to get a new inverter. Okay? So that means that you may have to go to school, learn something new, and get a new job. You know, if, if if you can spare two or three hours a day, you can go to school online. You can do a whole lot of things, but you need to get a new inverter so you can get that new job and stop being miserable. You, you know, you only live one time and people are all so afraid of what if this happened? What if that happened? What if, oh, I can't pay this bill. I can't pay that bill. But a lot of people don't have faith. You know, a lot of people don't don't pray to something higher than themselves and they look at themselves as the highest thing and a lot of times when we look at ourselves as being the highest thing there is on earth or around the earth or above the earth or we we you know we the creators just the creators i believe we are demigods i really believe we are all gods and we should act accordingly good as good gods but i believe that there's a higher power than me that i can pray to that i cannot see just like the air we can't see but we breathe i believe that so by me having that kind of faith and when i pray i know things are going to happen might not happen the exact way that i want them to happen but they're going to happen and most of the time it turns out pretty good so i'm saying to you do a pre-trip on your life sit back and look at everything that you possibly can get fixed or even just change out. But like I said, do a pre-trip on your life. Um, I do it often now. <laughs> um, I used to just let things go and just live every single day trying to survive, trying to take care of everything else and everybody else. And now I am actually doing a pre-trip on my life and trying to fix the things that have been broken for so long. Um, and it's, it's hard. I'm not going to say it's easy. You know, you want happiness. You want it the way you want it. But it doesn't come out that way, you know. I wanted um, to work with my sister. It didn't work out. But what can I do about it, you know. You know, I did a pre-trip on it. Thinking that everything was going fine. But sometimes after a pre-trip, things still can fall apart. And you just got to get it fixed by moving on. You know, I thought. I was in a relationship. I was so inspired, you know, just talking to this person, just being, a, you know, just this person being in my life. It just made me feel like I could do everything and anything. So right now I'm doing a pre-trip to see what was, you know, everything that was broken and what I can get repaired. But I got to get it repaired, you know, otherwise it'll, it, I would stay that way. And I would stay brokenhearted. I would stay disappointed that the person don't even really want to talk to me, you know? And I'm like, what did I do? And you think about my sister. I'm like, that, that was the person who I was with. So, And I'm like, when you sit there and you look back and you do a pre-assessment of what on earth did I do to deserve this much pain in my heart? And then you... If you don't have any answers, you have to go out and, and try to talk to people and find answers, especially when you don't have any. You don't have the answers for everything. You can do all the pre-chips you want, 
like me. I'm not going back there to put that inverter in. You know, I'm not going to fix it. The mechanic's going to do it. And sometimes you have to go and get help. After the pre-trip and you find out what's wrong, you have to go and get help to fix the problem. And that's what I'm doing. I'm talking to friends. I'm talking to, um, you know, my friends are psychologists, which I'm going to call her later on today. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm doing. But I'm doing something. I'm trying to fix it because I know right now I'm broken. I know right now I'm hurting. But I'm working on it. And that's all you got to do is work on it.